Hey everyone, thank you again for joining. As you already know or may not know that today's webinar will cover the topic deploy sharded Redis cluster in Kubernetes using KubeDB. And today we have Saad with us. It's his first webinar, so let's just go easy on him. He is going to demonstrate the whole thing and give the speech. And just for the disclaimer, we are gonna answer all your questions in the Q&A part of this webinar. And if you have anything to ask during the webinar, just shoot them into the chat part of the Zoom. So I'm not going to take any more time. Sad, if you may please start. Hello, thank you, Raghib. Uh, am I loud and clear? Yeah, you are audible. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, uh, it's hello. Hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Abdullah Shad, software engineer at AppsCode. Today our webinar title is uh, Deploy Sharded Redis Cluster in Kubernetes using KubeDB. So uh, let's look at the table of contents. So uh, first, uh, today first we will look at uh, what is Sharded Redis Cluster and then uh, we will see why, we, why you should use KubeDB Redis. And then I will demonstrate uh, the some of the feature we are uh, offering. So uh, among them, automatic failover, scaling horizontally and vertically, and uh, then uh, reconfiguring your cluster and uh, version upgrading. After that, uh, I will show how to secure your cluster using TLS. And in the end, we will have a Q and A session. I will happy to answer if you have any questions. So uh, let's uh, move on. Let's look at uh, what is a uh, sharded Redis cluster. So let's uh, first uh, know what is uh, Redis. So, you know, Redis is uh, open source in memory data structure stored, and uh, you can use Redis as a database message broker or a streaming engine. Redis provides different uh, kind of data structure such as hash, sets, sorted sets, and I streams. So uh, Redis has different modes and uh, standalone cluster and Sentinel. So uh, Redis provides high availability via Redis Sentinel and automatic data partitioning with Redis cluster. Today we will talk about uh, Redis cluster. Using Redis cluster, uh, you can divide your data into different shards and data will be available even when some node fails and not able to communicate. However, the cluster stops to operate for a period of time in the events of large failure until enough nodes come back. So here in the screen, you can see a simple Redis configuration, Redis cluster configuration with uh, three master nodes and uh, three slave nodes. So uh, here uh, we have three shards. So in each shard, there is a master and there is a replica. So uh, you can uh, connect to any master or slave uh, using Redis database port 6379 and uh, perform your database operations. And, uh, and Redis uses internally 16379 port for their internal communication. And uh, the configuration between master and slave works like that. The each slave contain a copy of the data of its master. So uh, it's always try to replicate what data master has. So whenever master fails, the slave can take over and uh, become master. And when master comes back, so it will join as slave. So the role keeps changing between the nodes uh, according to the failure. So uh, let's have a look at challenges of deploying Redis cluster in Kubernetes. So uh, uh, you may face many challenges when you try to deploy Redis cluster in Kubernetes manually. So first you need to provision your database. So to provision your database, you need to have uh, knowledge of Kubernetes, Kubernetes concepts such as uh, a stateful set, service, and uh, persistent volume. And you also need knowledge of Helm to deploy your database. And after deploying, you need to maintain your database so that your data is secure. And uh, to, as for maintaining, you need to know how to recover your database when uh, there is a failure or disaster scenarios. Then you need to update your version when a uh, new version comes up. Then uh, you need to do vertical and horizontal scaling according to your need. And when you have more data, you need to do volume expansion to add support for that much data. So let's have a look what KubeDB is offering to face these challenges. So uh, KubeDB, we, with KubeDB, you can uh, provision your database with just deploying a YAML. It's that easy. So you can just uh, deploy, apply a YAML, and your database is provisioned. After that, uh, KubeDB provides automatic failover, which means that uh, there are uh, different disaster scenarios. So 
sometimes your node fails sometimes whole machine fails so a lot of the ports can be unavailable so the ports come back and they need to join the cluster again so kubedb manages this whole thing and then kubedb provides vertical scaling and horizontal scaling you can just uh, apply aml and uh, your database will be scaled according to your need then uh, there is version update so uh, again it is also easy to update your version whenever a new version comes up and then you also expand your volume when you have more data and uh, then uh, you can secure your data with tls or with database communications uh, using kubedb so uh, as for securing tls you can add tls certificate delete tls certificate and uh, update your tls configurations and then uh, you can uh, rotate your tls certificates when uh, your uh, expiry date of certificate come up then kubedb provides monitoring you can uh, have different metrics to see how your database is doing and uh, with that uh, now uh, let's move on to the resources and here are the resources you can uh, get a license to uh, you can get a license license issuer.appscore.com to get kubedb license and uh, to learn more about the this uh, to learn more about kubedb you can move to kubedb.com and uh, that is our well documented site okay so let's move on now uh, the installation so you can uh, install kubedb using these helm commands so you can also find that in our uh, website kubedb.com and uh, now let's move on to the demonstration so first i will uh, uh, deploy a redis cluster so before deploying let's move on to my workstation and uh, see what is there so uh, here you can see my workstation so uh, i have a i have created an msps that is a uh, demo msps so you can see uh, i will do all the work in this namespace and here i am watching the pods of this demo namespace uh, and then here I am watching the Redis object of this demo namespace. This Redis object is a uh, CRD provided by kubedb. And then here is a Redis ops request, uh, ops request object I am watching. This is also provided by kubedb. You can uh, the you can uh, do different types of uh, operations using ops request. So uh, let's deploy a uh, YAML. Okay, so uh, before that, uh, I am using kind to run Kubernetes. Let's have a look at the kind version. So I am using version 0.11.1, and uh, let's have a look at uh, kubectl version. Okay, so uh, you can see the version is 1.21.1. Okay, now uh, let's deploy the YAML. Okay. So here you can see I have deployed a YAML and these Redis cluster is in provisioning state. So the ports are creating and soon this cluster will be provisioned. So let's have a look at the YAML. So uh, here you can see the YAML I have just deployed. So here uh, API version is kubedb.com slash v1 alpha 2 and uh, kind is Redis. In the metadata section, we have a name and namespace. So the name of the database is Redis cluster. And uh, as I have already said, I will do all the work in demo namespace. So the namespace is demo. In the spec, you can first see the version. So version is 5.0.3 v1. So this is a version provided by kubedb. Underlying this version, I am using, uh, we are using the Redis image 5.0.3 and the mode is cluster. In kubedb, we support different modes like cluster, standalone, and sentinel. So I will be talking about cluster mode today. So for cluster mode, <coughs> you need to give to uh, major information, uh, how many master you want and how many replicas you want. So here I am uh, provisioning a database with three master and one replica. So uh, there will be three shards and in each shard, there will be one master, one replica. So there will be total six uh, Redis instances. So a storage type is durable, which means that uh, your data will be uh, reserved during the pod restarts. So, and then uh, you can see I have, uh, a storage is 100 megabyte and a storage class is standard and in the last you can see the termination policy is wipeout which means that if i delete this uh, redis object then all the uh, stateful set and ports uh, that this redis object owns will also be deleted you can uh, uh, add you can use another termination policy which is do not terminate to prevent your database from accidental deletion if you use that uh, termination policy, uh, you, your DB won't be deleted. So you can use that for safety. 
and uh, now let's have a look what's going on under the hood so uh, here is our kubedb operator and as a user i have uh, created a redis crd using that eml and this redis crd is watched by our kubedb operator so uh, i have created and uh, kubedb operator acknowledge this change and then kubedb operator come into action it will first create a service account and a service so the service will be used to connect to the database so you can do different database operations using that service and after that uh, the rvec will be created yeah, yeah, you have a cluster role and cluster role minding then the stateful sets will be created it does, these stateful sets will contain the redis image so then pod disruption budget will be created and the service monitor after that the app binding will be created okay so let's see if our database is ready yeah you can see the status is ready so uh, i have successfully provisioned a redis uh, redis database and uh, there is you can see six ports so the database contains six ports so uh, let's let's see how you can connect to this database so let's get the service in the demo namespace you can, here you can see uh, there is uh, two service created in the demo namespace one is uh, redis cluster ports is cluster ip is none so it is a headless service for internal communication between the ports and this is the service we can uh, connect. Uh, this is a cluster IP service. We can connect to this service to do different database operation. So uh, for this demonstration, for uh, simplification, I will be doing database operation by directly executing the pod, but you can use the service to connect to the database. So let's exec into one of the pod. Okay, so uh, let's see this cluster information. How is, uh, let's see the cluster information. So I'll, See the cluster nodes so you can see there is six nodes now let's see how many masters are there let's grab the masters okay so as you can see there is only uh, three masters so as we have intended now uh, let's put some data in the in the in our database so let's okay okay so let's Okay, so I have put some data in the database. Now uh, we will look at the failover scenarios. So <clears throat> there can be two major failover scenarios we need to handle. First, uh, whenever in a shard, the master is deleted or master is uh, for some network reasons or any reason, master is, uh, is not accepting any connection. So in that moment to run the database, the slave should take over and become uh, configure itself as master and uh, the, continue to serve as master until the deleted uh, node or the network problem node comes back. So uh, let's see, uh, here we have uh, Redis port 00, it is a master node. So here you can see this node is master and it is a 00 node. So its slave is 01 because they are in the same shard. So let's just, uh, stop, let's just stop this node. So. So I will just uh, debug slave this node for one minute and see if the this uh, replica node becomes master. So uh, let's see if the, it, okay. So let's exec into this replica node and uh, see its role. Okay, so currently there is uh, no role. Okay, so sorry so the role is master as you can see this was a slave node and this role has changed to master we can see also logs of this pod to confirm okay here you can see the logs so uh, first this node uh, this node identify that is master is in fail state it is not accepting any connection so then what is the what it do it uh, it did started a failover election and after that failover election, it is uh, it owned the failover election and became the master. So uh, there is only one candidate in these scenarios. What if there was more replica? Let's say one master and three replica. So then all of these replica will try to become master. So the one with most latest data will become master. So in this case, there was only one replica, so he, uh, it became master. And uh, here you can see that uh, the node, the sleep has ended. So the node should come back. And after the comeback, we can see what its role, if it is still master or not. So let's see. 
Now you can see its role is slave. So it has come back and configured itself as slave. And again, uh, here you can uh, see the logs, this partial uh, string synchronization. That means that this node wants to become slave of this node and started this uh, data synchronization. Okay, so uh, here is uh, the one type of scenarios where uh, you want to you want your slave node to become master when master fails. And another type of scenarios can be when uh, your uh, all the nodes are deleted for let's say for some uh, network issue or some uh, physical machine issue or server issue, all the nodes are deleted and uh, unable to communicate with each other. So that is a disaster scenario. So let's see if uh, what if all the nodes is deleted, if they are able to form a cluster again or not. So I'll delete all the ports. So here I have deleted all the ports and uh, the ports should be recreated. When we delete the ports, the event will be noticed and the process will be reconciled. So the stateful set will again create the ports and when a ports come back, it will have different IP, but uh, same node ID as Redis instance. So the thing with Redis is when a node uh, restart, a pod restart and comes back, it node ID does not change, only the IP change. So it will have the same node ID as previous. And along with node ID, another thing stays is the uh, nodes.conf file. So the nodes.conf file Redis in Redis contains the information about the cluster. So each node has a copy of this file. In this file, it has uh, other files info. So uh, when it comes back, the file has it has the file with other nodes info, but the file is outdated because all the ports are restarting. So the IP are not same. So what it will do is it will uh, try to whenever it joins the cluster, it will announce its new IP. So which might be recorded by other nodes. So similarly, all the nodes will announces its uh, new IP. And in this process, all the nodes will update its nodes.con file with the new IPs. And after that, they will again communicate with, they can communicate with each other using the new IP and they can again form the cluster. So here you can see all the ports have come back in the running state and uh, database state is still critical. And now it's not ready, it will be ready in a minute when they form a cluster. So uh, it means a database, uh, let me uh, explain the status here. So when a database status is ready, it means that we are uh, good to go. Uh, database is accepting connections and when it's it critical that means that all the ports are not ready some replica cannot connect to its master and when it is not ready it means that uh, a master is not accepting any client connections okay so here uh, the our database is ready so here you can see using kubedb you, uh, you don't need to worry about these disaster scenarios it is uh, managed by kubedb you uh, data is secured even, even when uh, there is disaster scenario happens or the master fails. Okay, now uh, let's move on. So now we want to uh, see how horizontal scaling works. So to horizontal scaling, we want to scale our database. So let's apply a YAML to scale up our database. Okay, uh, so let's look at the YAML. So this is the YAML I have deployed. So here you can see uh, I have I am creating a ops request object. This ops request is provided by uh, our ops manager, uh, our ops manager. So that is a enterprise feature of kubedb. And uh, here you can see the API version is ops.kubedb.com slash v1 alpha one and uh, kind is ready ops request. In the metadata section, we have a name and namespace. So the namespace is demo and the name of the ops request is horizontal scale up. And in the spec section, uh, we have the type of these ops request. So the, we want to do horizontal scaling. So the type is horizontal scaling. And in the database reference, we want to specify the name of the database in which we, are, we want to apply this horizontal scaling. So in our case, we have specified the name as Redis cluster. We want to scale up this Redis cluster database. So in the horizontal scaling section, you can see our new requirements. We want four master and two replicas. So which means that uh, there will be four shards and in each shard, there will be one master and two replicas. So in each shard, there will be four nodes. Okay, so uh, there, sorry, there will be three nodes, one master and two replica. So total, uh, there will be four shards. Okay, now let's look at how things are there. So you can see this horizontal scaling uh, obstacles is successful and uh, database is still, is, uh, is still critical, which means that the 
cluster is not configured yet so it will be configured in a minute and here you can see it is now ready okay so let's check that uh, if this uh, newly created uh, shard knows about the other shard so it has uh, if it successfully has the information about other shards uh, or other nodes so let's just uh, see how many masters are there now yeah as you can see there is uh, four four master now and uh, and okay let's see if it we can get our data from this node yeah you, you can see we can uh, get our data from this node so that means that uh, this node this new shard is successfully uh, added into the database and here you here you can see each shard now contain uh, total three ports so one is master and other two is uh, slave so uh, yeah so this horizontal scaling is, is successful now let's just uh, move to our previous state so again now we want to do horizontal scaling and go to the previous configuration so let's apply scale down eml okay so let's have a look at the scale down eml and uh, this is similar quite similar as the previous eml only difference is uh, here you, you can see the master is three replica is one so you want to go to our previous state so you can just uh, specify the master and replica configuration any configuration you want and you can move to uh, that configuration so uh, that is that so uh, let's have a look at the uh, high level overview how things are happening behind the scene so as you can see um, now we have the community operator kubedb community operator so kubedb using kubedb community operator we have already created a database that is database and uh, now you want to create a ops request yaml so as a user i uh, applied a yaml that type was redis ops request and our ops manager operator uh, watches for that ops request objects so after uh, and in the ops request uh, in the ops request of ops request eml uh, you have noticed that there was a section database reference so we are referencing a database to do this operation okay so let's see uh, let's say i am referring to this uh, some redis database and after that the ops manager operator will pause that database so that the community operator does not um, change this state of this database during the operation so uh, it will pause the database and then it will create or delete stateful sets or ports so uh, why why there is a stateful set and ports so let's say you just want to add new replica to existing shards in that case we don't need to uh, create any more stateful set because uh, in our uh, in our settings each stateful set represent a shard so when we want to uh, add new replica what we do we just want to um, we just want to increase the ports under that stateful set so we don't need to create more stateful set similarly when you want to scale down only replica you don't want to change the shard so we can just delete the ports from uh, from the stateful set uh, obviously we will delete, delete the uh, replica ports and in the scale up when you want to create a new shard we need to create a new stateful set uh, using these uh, how many replicas and uh, with previous uh, previous infos and uh, again when you want to scale down the scale down the shard we need to delete a stateful set and after this creation or deletion according to the given yaml uh, the stateful set or ports is updated according to the request after that uh, it will ops manager operator will update the cluster after updating the cluster it will resume this community operator so that it can perform its routine operations so uh, let's see how things are there okay as you can see our uh, scale down operation is successful okay so now let's have a uh, look at these ports okay let's grab the masters So here you can see again there is only three master the fourth master is deleted and in redis in redis uh, shard you uh, there is slots so there is total uh, 16384 slots so each shard serves some slots so data is uh, each data is data belong to a slot so whenever you have a key and uh, the key is um, this key belongs to a uh, certain slot 
so the slot is served by shards so when we add new shard this new shard must serve some uh, slot otherwise uh, the class sharding is not effective so what we do is we uh, take some slots from the existing master and give it to the uh, new master and again when we want to scale down so uh, all 16384 slots should be covered otherwise this database will not work so then again we take the take the slots this uh, node was serving and uh, we distribute these slots to the existing masters so here you can see these slots uh, these slots is uh, newly added some slots from the deleted master and uh, all the slots are uh, covered so let's see Okay, so here you can see uh, there is three slave and uh, three master as we wanted. So uh, let's uh, move on to the next ops request, which is vertical scaling. So uh, in the vertical scaling, we want to update the resources our pod is using. So let's see how much resources currently the pods are using. <coughs> So uh, you can see the CPU is uh, 100 millicore and memory is 100 megabyte. So which means that uh, each pod have these much resources to use. So what if you need to update your resource? So you are doing more operations, so you need more uh, resource. So let's apply uh, vertical scaling ML. <coughs> so now let's have a look at the ML. So here you can see this vertical scaling ML I have just deployed. So here API version is ops.kubedb.com slash v1 alpha one. And uh, kind is redis ops request. And in the metadata section, we have name and namespace. And uh, the database reference is redis cluster. And in the vertical scaling, you have the first, the container name. So the container name is redis, which is the main container of the pod. So uh, there can be different containers in a pod. So if you want to, uh, if you want to update the resources of uh, other container, you need to specify the container name. So after that, we have request section. In the request section, we are specifying, specifying how much resource we need. So uh, uh, for the demonstration purpose, I have, uh, I have uh, selected that memory should be 200 megabyte and CPU is 200 uh, millicore. Okay, so uh, let's move on. So. <clears throat> As you can see, our vertical scaling ops request is progressing and the database stage is critical. So that uh, database, so it means that some of the ports are terminating and again joining the cluster because uh, how this works is when we do vertical scaling, first we update the stateful sets and then we restart all the ports to reflect the changes. And, and in the end, when the restart is successful, we patch the DB object. So uh, let's see the stateful set if it is updated. Okay, so, so we have uh, three stateful set as uh, we have uh, three shards here. So let's look at the YAML of one of the stateful sets. Okay. So here in the under the template section, we have a section containers and in the containers, we have the info about the containers. So, uh, so here you can see we have a resource field. This resource field is already updated because uh, you can see the CPU is 200 and memory is uh, CPU, CPU is uh, CPU request is 200 millicore and memory request is 200 megabytes. So the stateful set is already updated and uh, the so after updating the stateful set we are uh, restarting all the ports so to reflect the changes and the db object will update it in the uh, last part so when this uh, restarts is successful the db we will update the db object so let's see the db object now So here you can see the DB object and here we have a uh, pod template section and in the pod template section, we have the resources. So here you can see the DB object is not yet updated. It has 100 megabyte uh, memory request and 100 milligore CPU request. 
so it will be updated when all the pod re uh, restarts so now uh, you can see some of the ports have already restarted and uh, some of the ports are restarting and the restart process is happens when we restart the ports we first uh, restart the replica ports after that we restart the master ports so uh, in the shard zero both of the ports have been restarted as we can see from the edge and uh, in the shard one the master is uh, restarting and replica have been restarted uh, and in the shard two one replica is restarted and uh, master is now restarting so let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at the uh, yaml of a restarted port so uh, port 00 it is already restarted so let's see if it is updated yeah it is updated as you can see uh, cpu is 200 millicore and memory is 200 megabyte so uh, by the in by this uh, every port will be updated and after that we will patch the db object so uh, let's wait a few moments for this to be completed Okay, as you can see, the database is now ready. All the ports are in running state. <coughs> and here again, the database goes to critical because some replica cannot connect to it master. So as all the ports have been restarted, they now again has to, uh, has to establish a new connection with the master. So it, uh, it is taking some time. Okay, it will, go, it will go to the ready state eventually. So let's um, move on to the our next ops request, which is uh, reconfigured. So uh, when you deploy a database, you can uh, provide some configuration. Using this configuration, your uh, database will work. Uh, here, when we, I have deployed the YAML, I did not uh, provided any configuration so that the default configuration is working. So let's have a look at the configuration. Yeah, so the database is ready. You can see from here. And uh, now let's have a look at the configuration, what configuration this ready subject is using. So here you can see in the uh, in the pod we, I am executing the pod and here you can see there is a file named default conf. So let's have a look at what's in there. Here you can see the uh, there are different default configuration have been set. So uh, what if you want to update some value or update uh, a field from here or you want to add new configuration? So uh, you, you need to uh, apply new configuration. You can you you can easily do that by using kubedb. You can create a ops request and then uh, that uh, that ops request will update your configuration. So uh, let's have a uh, look at these. Uh, so okay, so let's create a reconfigure YAML. Then we will have a look at the configuration. Okay, so let's have a look at the YAML. So here you can see the YAML and the configuration. So I wanted to update this cluster node timeout uh, and I want to add two new configuration which is uh, replica disclex sync is no and replica ping replica period is 500. So the replica disclex sync mean no, which means that um, the sync will not be disclex. So first we will sync with the disk and then we will uh, communicate this with uh, network so when this value set to yes the replica tries to communicate directly by within the network so uh, you can set it to yes when you have a very fast network and again a uh, replica ping replica period is set to 500 which means that a replica will wait for 500 millisecond for it for its master to be uh, replied to its ping so if uh, master does not respond within 500 milliseconds the replica will think that this master might be dead, then it will start a failover election by communicating with the other nodes in the cluster. So uh, see what you need to do is you have a configuration file. You need to create a secret from this configuration file. I have already created a secret. That secret name is updated custom config. So let's have a look at that secret. So uh, here you can see I have that secret I have already created. The name is updated custom config. Now let's look at the YAML of that secret. Here you can see in the data section, we have two, uh, the key is redis.conf and in the uh, value field, we have, uh, we have the data, uh, we, we have the configuration in base64 encoded mode. And uh, we are using this secret 
to create the ops request. So let's have a look at the ops request uh, YAML. Here you can see I am using this uh, updated custom config as the secret name in the config secret section. And uh, again, the other fields in the uh, YAML is uh, similar as previous. And uh, we need to specify the database reference. And uh, here, okay, so uh, here you can see that uh, the ops request is progressing and the database is critic in critical state. Again, uh, with, uh, we are restarting all the we are restarting all the ports to reflect the changes. Okay, so what if you don't need this uh, whole configuration? All you need is just uh, want to add a one line configuration uh, to the to your config. So then you can we have another option that is uh, inline configuration. So in inline configuration, you don't need to create a configuration file or you don't need to create a secret. You need to just uh, uh, add a line and that line will be appended with your configuration file. So uh, here uh, you can see in the configuration field, we have a inline config section and in the inline config section, the, we have added one line, which will be, which can be added to our database. So let's have a look how much it progressed. So it is still uh, updating the, uh, restarting the ports. So uh, you can, uh, here you can see uh, some of the ports have already been restarted. So we can see how these changes uh, reflected by executing one of the ports. So uh, port 00 is already restarted because we can see from that, from the edge. Okay, so now let's move on to this directory where the configuration file locates. And so here you can see previously there was only one configuration default.conf. Now there is two configuration and default.conf and release.conf. Let's just, uh, see what's in the configuration files. So here in the last line, you can see it says to include another configuration file. So what will happen is Redis will first evaluate this configuration. After that, it will evaluate the next configuration. So let's have a look what in the uh, Redis configuration file. Here you can see in the Redis configuration file, the, the data are exactly as the configuration file I have uh, showed. So this configuration file will be added and here you can see this cluster node timeout is 6000 here and again here is it's 5000 so what value will be used so in redis when uh, there is uh, it is different values for a same configuration or same key there is different value for the same key the key appeared later will be used so here this uh, key will be appear later because first redis will evaluate this con this one then it will evaluate the next one so the cluster node timeout is should be 6,000. So uh, let's have a look how how this value is set. Yeah, so here you can see I have get the config. So cluster node timeout configuration, this value is 6,000. Okay, so uh, here you can see that our uh, ops request is uh, successful. This is this reconfiguration ops request and <laughs> all the ports have been successfully restarted and our database state is <clears throat> ready. Okay, so uh, so we have successfully reconf reconfigured our uh, Redis cluster, and now let's move on to our next ops request, which is uh, version upgrade. So, uh, what if there is new version comes up and you want to uh, update to that uh, version? So, kubedb also provides a easy way to do that. You, you need to uh, apply a YAML using uh, this desired version and the version will be updated. So I have already deployed the YAML. As you can see, this version upgrade uh, ops request is uh, progressing. And uh, again, all the ports will be restarted to with the new version. So uh, let's have a look at the YAML. So you, you can see all the fields as similar as the other ops request. And in the update section, we just need to specify the uh, target version. So he, now uh, we want to update our database to version 6.2.5, which is the latest version provided by kubedb. Now let's have a look what is happening behind the scene uh, when we update the version. So here again, we have a Redis object, which is created by community operator and uh, community operator watches for this object. And now we are creating a Redis object object by deploying a YAML. 
and this op Redis ops request object is watched by our uh, ops manager operator. So uh, after uh, we uh, in the YAML we have referring to the database we want to update. Uh, we want to upgrade then these ops manager operator will uh, pause the database so that the community operator cannot do any operation on the uh, on the db object after that uh, the ops manager operator will update the pod image so it will uh, grab all the ports and then in the all the ports it will update the image so after updating the image it will uh, restart all the ports and uh, when all the restart is successful then uh, it will update the db object and after db object is object it will resume the database so let's see how things are there as you can see it is still progressing and the uh, uh, ports are terminating that means that it is uh, restarting so uh, again in this ops request we first patch the stateful set and then uh, we restart the parts and then we update the db object when uh, restart is successful so let's have a look uh, at the stateful set so here uh, in the stateful set uh, in the spec we have a template section and in the template we have a spec so uh, in the container section and we should have a field name image let's see yeah so you can see the image is already updated to 6.2.5 so the stateful set already uh, stateful set is updated with the changes but uh, the db object is not is in is still in 5.0.3 v1 because the restart process is not uh, completed yet so after that it is it will be also updated now uh, some of the ports are restarted so this port is restarted so let's have a look at uh, port 11 to see if uh, the changes have been reflected Okay, so now we are uh, seeing this uh, YAML of this Redis 1.1 port. So let's have a look if it is updated. So in the spec, we have a uh, container section. In the container section, there should be a field name image. Yeah, so as you can see, the pod image is updated. So this pod is also updated. And uh, so each of the pod update with the restart. So uh, stateful set has info about the new image. And during the restart, it will add that new image and remove the previous image from the pod. So the pod uh, will operate using the new image. So um, again, here the cluster is again formed newly because uh, all the pods restart. So they try to connect with each other again uh, using the new image configuration. So uh, after they connect with each other, they, uh, they again, uh, in during the restarts, let's say uh, there is two ports in a shard. So uh, the port comes back first should be master. So as we are restarting uh, replica first, so the, the sometimes the replica port take over as master. So uh, so it can happen the master role keep switching in the shard. Okay, so all the ports have been restarted and our uh, version upgrade ops request is successful and database status is critical as uh, this communication between the ports is still happening it will be ready in a few moments okay so uh, our next ops request is uh, tls adding tls so as uh, i have deployed this cluster without any tls so you can see that i can uh, get information from these clusters without using any certificate and i can uh, get the data and set the data without any uh, TLS secured connections. Okay, so now uh, when you want to uh, secure your database, you can add TLS any moment you want using our uh, KubeDB. So here you can see the status is ready. So the cluster is again uh, formed and ready to go. So uh, uh, how we manage our TLS is we use Cert Manager to manage the certificates. 
So uh, you need to install Cert Manager in your cluster to uh, manage certificate using KubeDB. And uh, Cert Manager provides two way to issue certificate. One is uh, issuer and one is cluster issuer. So issuer works only in one namespace and cluster issuer can work in the whole cluster. So uh, let's have a look in the Cert Manager pod. So here you can see I have already installed the Cert Manager so that I, I can work with TLS. And uh, I, I need to uh, apply first create a issuer to uh, issue certificate. And the issuer is created. And I will use this issuer to uh, to add, add TLS certificate in our cluster to add TLS support. So uh, I have applied the YAML. May, uh, let's have a look at the issuer YAML and the TLS at TLS obstacles YAML. So here you can see, uh, first I have created a secret. Uh, you need to create a secret uh, using your uh, CA certificate and CA key. And that secret is used to create the issuer. So um here i have already created a secret name redis ca and this redis ca secret is used in the issuer yaml so uh, let's have a look at the secret so here you can see i have uh, this redis ca secret and in the uh, in the in its field data field i have a tls certificate and tls key which i have uh, created from uh, ca certificate and uh, ca key so uh, let's have a look at the issuer YAML again. So in the issuer uh, YAML, API version is startmanager.io slash v1 and uh, kind is issuer. Again, you can use issuer or cluster you issuer as you need. And in the metadata section, uh, we have a name and namespace. The namespace should be, uh, when you use issuer, the namespace should be same as your uh, database object. And the name of the issuer is Redis CA issuer. And in the spec, uh, we have a CA section. In the CA section, I am providing the secret name I, I created. So now let's move on to the uh, Redis Ops request object. So the name of the Ops request object is uh, at TLS and the namespace should be same as the database. And in the spec, I have database reference and uh, type. And after that, I have a TLS section. In the TLS section, you can see that uh, there is issuer reference field. In the issuer reference, uh, we need to specify that which issuer we are using. So we are using issuer from Start Manager. So the API group is startmanager.io and name is Redis CA issuer and uh, kind is issuer. And in the certificate field, we have a uh, different, uh, uh, we have a uh, different uh, information. So the here LIS is server and uh, organization is kubedb and you know as i am using in the local machine dns name is localhost and ip address is 127.0.0.1 okay now let's have a look what's happening in the workspace so uh, here you can see the uh, our ops request at tls is, is still progressing and our uh, database status is not ready so uh, again uh, it will restart all the ports to reflect the changes so so what's happen is whenever we uh, a pod restart and comes back online, so now it is TLS secured. So it will now do all its communication using TLS. So now other ports, they, if they are not TLS secured, they cannot connect with this newly newly new pod. So they, these ports also uh, restart and come back to communicate with this port. So as we are uh, restarting all the ports one by one, so a port comes back and it waits for other ports to communicate with uh, TLS secured connection. And it also tries to connect with other port with uh, TLS secured connection. So here you can see all the ports are uh, restarting and some of the ports have already been restarted. And uh, after all the ports come back, they will try to uh, form the cluster again. Okay, so we can, we can exit into one of the newly created ports and see if we can extract any data. Yeah, so this pod is now TLS secured because it's already restarted. Uh, then you can see we cannot get any info about the cluster. And similarly, if we try to uh, get any data, yeah, it does not say us anything. Okay. 
okay so let's wait a, a few moments to see uh, to being cluster should be ready by then okay all the ports are restarted now they will communicate with each other uh, in T using tls secure connection and the they will form the database again so uh, this is the last ops request i will be demonstrating uh, demonstrating today uh, so uh, meanwhile uh, let's wait for this database to be ready we can uh, check out the uh, upcoming features in kubedb redis so uh, as future work uh, we will do a backup and restore of redis cluster uh, it will be done using stash which is uh, again xcode product and we'll uh, add new version support so uh, you know recently redis 7 is released so we will add support for that version and uh, we'll do various fast performance improvement uh, we will uh, we'll love to uh, have your feedback and update okay so here now you can see uh, the database is ready and the ops request uh, reconfigure tls is successful so now let's see if we again so now we want to connect to the database using our certificate so here we are uh, providing this uh, client certificate and client key and also we are providing the ca certificate to connect to this database okay so now let's see okay so we just need to know the cluster nodes so here you can see uh, all the nodes is in fail state which means that the new ip address is not yet updated and database status is not ready so they are still trying to communicate with each other so when they uh, successfully communicate with each other and ip tables is will be updated so let's wait a few more moments okay again it's ready so let's see yeah uh, some of the uh, some of the ports have successfully communicated with current node and some are still uh, could not communicate so they are trying to communicate with each other okay so let's see another port Okay, let's again uh, connect with TLS certificates. Yeah, now as you can see, all the ports are uh, in good state, uh, healthy state, no one is in fail state. So the IP tables have been updated and uh, our database status is ready. So now we can, uh, we are good to go to get the data. So let's see if we have the data. Okay, as you can see, we can get the data now using the um, because we have connected with uh, using tls certificates yeah so we can get the data so now our database is uh, secured with uh, tls connections and uh, similarly there is uh, other tls uh, features you can uh, other thing you can do with tls uh, you can remove certificates if you want and if you want to update your update your TLS configuration, you can also update that. And when uh, your uh, TLS certificate is close to expired date, and you can rotate certificate to uh, add uh, to uh, to overcome that. And uh, yeah, okay. With that, we are uh, close to end of our webinar. And now we have a Q and A session. Uh, I am I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Hi guys, do you have anything to ask? Anything? Any questions? Uh, yeah, I have one quick question. So, uh, and this is uh, supported for uh, what what versions of Redis? Uh, so for four, uh, five and six, right? All the features that we just showed today. Yeah, yeah. So it is also supported for four. I have showed with five and six, but all the features are available in Redis version four also. Uh, what about Redis seven? Uh, have we tried that? Uh, so uh, QBB is not currently supporting Redis 7. We uh, we will uh, add that support soon. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, anyone else? We are happy to answer.
Okay, so it seems there is no confusion at all as it was a really nice presentation. Thank you, Sad, and thank you everyone again for joining. Uh, our next webinars are already scheduled in our appscore.com slash webinar page, so be sure to register. And also, if you have anything to ask, please reach us in our uh, email. It's uh, hello at redappscore.com, and you can also follow us in Twitter. You can visit our GitHub repo. So let's end this in the webinar today. Goodbye and have a good day.